men that was in debt. This is this is crazy. Men that had troubles. They were in debt. They were not happy. They began to gather themselves around David, Minister T. The scripture says everybody that had trouble went to David. Everybody that had financial issues and was in debt, they went to him. Everybody that just wasn't even happy, they went to David. And they said it was about 400 men. Well, where did they go? Verse number one says, David left this place called Gath. And he went to this place called Adullam. And he went into a cave. Oh my God. He went into the cave. And his brothers found out that David went to a cave. His father's family found out where he went, and they all went to David in a cave. What I want to talk about, y'all, just for a little bit right now is Captain Caveman. Hallelujah. <laughs> See, some of y'all are too young. When I was young, there was a cartoon that was out, and he would say, Captain Caveman. And he had a club that looked like it was made out of stone. And he would, he would take that club and he would sling it this way. And he would fly behind the stone almost like how, uh, what's his name, Thor. He would fly behind his club. And he would have him on like a woolly covering, like a woolly vest. And he was Captain Caveman. And as I was thinking about King David, y'all, we got to remember King David. He was anointed to be king. David was anointed to be king. But it was as if his life was already in a king. David was rejected. David was not even counted, was not even considered. And David began to make what was around him important, which was the sheep. And here it is. David's life was filled with incidents and experiences where you go from being up high on the mountain to back down in the valley. It was David that said, the Lord is my shepherd, and I shall not want. Like that, that is a, a confession of like saying, because my trust and my hope is in God. They, 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 I don't, when he said I shall not want, I don't think this means that David didn't have needs. It meant that no matter what need he had, he would not allow himself to complain. He looked at it like no matter what's taking place in my life, the Lord is the one that's overseeing me. God is watching over me. God is teaching me. He's training me. He's strengthening me. He's showing me some things about myself. He's showing me some things about people around me. And y'all, and, and look y'all, even though David was chosen out of all of his brothers, the scripture said that there would be times when David would be like he'd come out the cave almost like he'd get a field trip. Like I get a chance to leave that old the old thing to Stephen. And, and his dad said, come, come here, go, go bring some food to your brothers, the real soldiers. David had to go bring some cheese and some food for his own brothers because they were the real soldiers. They didn't realize David was in the cave. They didn't realize that just because David was in this place, that God wasn't already training him. Y'all, I'm telling you something. David, well, everybody say, I'm being trained right now. I'm being trained right now. And, and you got to know that the place where you are and what you're going through right now, don't you ever think that the most important valuable teacher that has ever existed and will always exist is the Lord God Himself. And 
no matter where you are, no matter what you're going through, the Lord is still teaching you. And if the Lord is your teacher, where can you run from Him to avoid His lesson? You think if you go to another state, you think you're going to outrun your teacher? You think if you get into another relationship, you think you're going to outrun your teacher? Suppose you get another job. You think you're going to outrun your teacher? I beg to let you know, no, you're not going to outrun your teacher. Because the scripture says, we will always have the bread of adversity and the water of affliction. These are your teachers. So no matter where you run, your teachers going to be right there knocking on your back saying, oh, I'm here. I know you got a new face that you're dealing with right now, but your teacher is like, oh, I'm still right here with you. You're going to get you a whole other car. And now you're driving a whole different car, and your teacher is like, you still can't get away. You got to be quicker than that. The teacher is always there. And we find out no matter where David went, guess who was with David? The teacher. Hallelujah. And what's happening, y'all, in this particular context of 1 Samuel chapter 22, David, the scripture says he left, he ran from death, and found his way to a cave. But guess what, y'all, chapter 21 was pretty interesting. Because David was with some men, and, and, and David had separated himself from his men, and, and they were like, the, the priest, when David showed up, he was hungry, and the men was hungry, and David showed up by himself, and the, the priest asked David, man, what you doing here by yourself? He said, man, we hungry. He said, I guess he felt like that sometimes that you move, you can't move with a whole lot of people, so David must have told him, stay back, y'all, stay over here. The scripture says he told the priest that I told them to meet me at a secret place. David shows up and he says, hey, look, me and my men hungry. Boy, this is so powerful, y'all. And he said, we need something to eat. He said, do you have something I can give my men? And the priest said, man, we don't have anything. The only thing we got in the temple is the fresh showbread. Oh, hallelujah. This, this is the bread that's fresh that's supposed to be given to God. It was, it was supposed to have that aroma and it was supposed to be a constant reminder of the provision that God had for his people. Can you imagine that whenever they came near the temple or the tabernacle that they would actually hear, they would smell this, this fresh aroma, fresh bread. I remember when I was young and we was in New Orleans, we used to have field trips, we used to go to Bunny Bread. And, and you know, just eating bread by itself to me is just nasty. But if you find some bread that's real good, they got bread that's real tasty. That is so good you can actually eat it by itself. And it won't gross you out. The scripture says that the priest told David, man, we don't have any, but we do have the showbread, y'all, this is so powerful. This is why we got to be so quick not to just judge people. Look at what David said. David said, give it to me. And the priest said, wait a minute. This bread is consecrated. Oh my God. This bread is holy. He asked David. He said, whoever partakes of this bread, they got to be holy. Holy bread for holy vessels. Look what David said. My men are holy. Watch this, y'all. Y'all, please don't judge me when we say this. I'm just gonna say what David said. Yeah. David yeah. said. David said the men are so holy. They hadn't had sex for three whole days. Yeah. Jesus was talking. 
talking about when he said, y'all have not heard about how David went and ate yeah. the soul bread? Yes, sir. Do you realize that this is supposed to be set aside for the priest for the last time I checked? The scripture says that you are royal priesthood. Uh. My God, I'm not just talking about the Levites anymore. I'm talking about the fact that all of my people will be holy. All of them will speak the word of God with boldness. All of them will understand their assignment. Hallelujah. And the scripture says, now listen, and after David gets the bread, look what David said next. He said, okay, I got some bread. He said, do you have a weapon that I can fight with? Look what the priest said. The only weapon we have is the sword from Goliath, the one who you killed. He said, I want you to know, man, that thing is like a museum piece because there's none like it. David said, with the battle, this cave dwelling life that I'm dealing with right now, give it to me. Give me that sword. Y'all, what I want y'all to just take a moment and think about the most triumphant victory you ever had in your life. I want you to just think about that and look at that like that was your Goliath sword. The sword that Goliath thought he was going to kill you with. You was able to chop his head off with his own weapon. Okay, are y'all with me right now? So look, y'all. See, and you got to understand, y'all, as mighty, as strong, as courageous, as much of a warrior David is, David is still submitted to authority. David still has reverence for the king. And David finds out that they're still looking for him. And David is on the run now. He got the sword. He got the showbread. And then he got to verse number one in chapter number 22. And the scripture says right here in 1 Samuel 22, verse 1, David left that and he went to a big hole in a rock, a big cave in a doom. His brothers and his father's family found out where David was. So they all went to the cave. I need y'all to understand sometimes the place where you go in Bosco, sometimes John man, sometimes we find ourselves going somewhere and when I say going somewhere, I'm not necessarily talking about going in a car or walking somewhere. You can be in your mind and you going somewhere. You can literally be sitting down in the same spot. You can be looking at something on television and all of a sudden in your mind, you somewhere. Yeah. Wow. And the scripture says that they all came to David and I need you to understand your friends, your family, whoever you hook up with, when they give you a call, when they try to come and see you, it's almost like they're coming to where you are. Are y'all feeling me? It's like they're coming so. to where you are. And what they what they found out was not only were they going to a physical cave, they were going to a place where David was. What is a cave, y'all? A cave is a large chamber, typically of natural origin, like from a mountain or a hillside or a cliff. And there is a hole inside of this cave, inside of this opening, large enough for humans to come into. Hallelujah. The cave is a place of retreat. Running for your life sometimes. Sometimes it's a place where you run so that you can find some safety and shelter. A cave is fear of confrontation. Like, like you, you need to have a you need to talk to somebody, you need to confront somebody or something. And when you feel inadequate, a lot of times you retreat to a cave. Remember when Jezebel was chasing after Elijah? The scripture says he retreated to a cave. It's a place of retreat, 
fear of confrontation. It's a place where it gets really dry. Hallelujah. Really hard. Ain't no mattresses in the cave. It's, it's just a hard place. It's real drafty. Sometimes it can even get really damp. Because they can have places where there's water in the cave, but, but the dampness is just a way to subtract comfort. Like, you know, if you dry, it kind of makes you mad. You know, how many of y'all, if you leave it to go somewhere, if you don't have an umbrella and it's raining, and you just don't like getting so wet? It just kind of makes you uncomfortable when your clothes are dry and all of a sudden now it starts getting wet. It starts to get uncomfortable because it's so damp. It's uncomfortable and it's dark. Now, this is where David retreated to. But the scripture says in verse number two, you say, wait a minute, David, where you going? Where you running to? Verse number two, everybody who had troubles, they went right with David. See, it's like, you gotta be careful, like I was talking to the leaders yesterday about how important our words are. The scripture says that Cornelius sent for Peter and said, man, I had some serious experiences with God and I'm supposed to hear the words that come from your mouth. Y'all, here it is. All these people are running to David and they run into David. David is already, y'all, anointed to be king, but they run to David to see can the king in the kingdom also become a captain in the cave. Oh my God. Let me tell you something. See, inside the cave, when you run it, it's almost like there is no titles in the cave. Because we all run for our life. We all at a place where we broke. We got all this debt. We don't know what's going on. We got troubles. And it's as if all of us are now becoming like one man. And I need you to understand every one of y'all are going to have people that's going to come and collect with you and connect to you. And I need y'all to understand that when they start coming, it's as if God is trying to reveal who's going to emerge as a captain, even in a cave. No matter how bad things are, don't you ever allow your bad circumstances to make you think that your position has been erased, that your call is not important anymore, that your anointing has left. Nah, I still am who I am. I just happen not to have no money right now. I still am who I am right now. Yeah. But my relationship situation is just a little shabby right now. I still am who I am right now. I'm just dealing with all these troubles that's coming around me. And the scripture says that when they, when they came to David, I'm sure that even though all of them was on the same level, in the midst of the conversation they started having with each other gospel, it's as if all of a sudden, Everybody is saying that I'm pretty sure they all was different heights and stuff like that. But I'm pretty sure spiritually it's as if all of them was the same height. Like the height of this podium right here. Like, you know, you get so low where you feel like you don't matter to nobody. You feel like you ain't no different from nobody else. All of y'all talking about how bad things are. And all of a sudden, because of what you got on the inside of you, somebody starts emerged no matter how bad it is no matter how much money was lost no matter how much your situation looked like you're supposed to be on your way down and the scripture says that they looked at why would they have to say he became their leader if he was already anointed to be king scripture says to as many as received him, to them gave him the power to become what, y'all? The sons of God. The sons of God. Those that believe on his name. Everybody say, I'm still called of God. I'm still called of God. 
Hallelujah. You know what, y'all? I sense that y'all are starting to emerge. Your heads are starting to rise up higher than those who've been sent around you. I need you to know that the scripture says that he seeks us together with him in high places. I'm not trying to make myself be better than anybody. I don't believe I'm better than anybody. But I'm answering a call. Man. Uh, your phone might not be ringing, but I hear my phone ringing. Why would I ask you, Minister T, or you answering your phone, and you look at your phone and be like, it ain't ringing. Why would I tell you, John, John, are you answering your phone, and you'd be like, it ain't ringing. But then if I look at you, Claude, and say, Man, I guess since John and Minister T not answering theirs, you'd be like, Pastor, my phone is answering. If God is calling you, answer the call. Because the time when God begins to call us out is for a specific purpose, for a specific time, for a specific season, and we need to be ready. <laughs> Scripture says everybody, everybody that had troubles. You mean to tell me God will anoint you in the midst of people when all of y'all got trouble? You mean to tell me that God will anoint you and choose y'all? We got to remember, y'all, we not governed by the things of this world. Because you know, the world will tell you if you lost your job and you ain't got no money. Well, I guess my words don't matter anymore. I guess, I guess I'm not important. Why? Because I don't even have a car. Who told you that? Based on what you possess, it's based on who you are and who you call to be. Praise the Lord. I had guys that I was cool with that never had a car throughout all the college. You think what would happen if they would have had the mindset that I'm not going to be nothing because I never was able to afford a car? And they got guys that I know right now making over six figures, but through all college, they never had a car. Don't you ever allow the conditions around you to change you and make you limit yourself to what God is calling you. Answer the call. Hallelujah. All I know is right now my phone not ringing, but y'all know how it is. We expected a call. You know how this boss story. Lisa told us she gonna call you. You be like, man, I don't want to get, get mad at me. So let me look at that phone and see if she texts me, see if she called me or something. Because I'm ready to answer. Scripture said everybody that had troubles, they went to David. Everybody that had debts went to him. They got so many people right now that got people flocking to them. And they said, I don't know why. They just treat me like I counsel them or something. Y'all, y'all know how it is. They got people that just come to you and it's because of the call. He said that they made David their captain. Everybody say Captain King, man. Captain King. Captain King. Hallelujah. Look what this word said right here. Yo, what made David able to do that? Oh my God. Look what happens, y'all. Verse number three. David then went to the town called Mizpah. It was in a country called Moab. So here he is. David got a temporary location at the cave. He leaves the cave to go to Moab. You know why? Because the scripture says that his father's family came to see him in the cave. And I guess David was like, man, I'm glad y'all came to see me, but the battle that I got ahead of me, I don't want y'all with me right now. <laughs> Yo, listen to this. David goes to Mizpah, and David said to the king of Moab, look what it says in verse number three, please let my father and my mother stay with y'all for a short time. I need to learn how God will help me. See y'all, when you're in a place where you're wondering, God, what do you got? What do you have to say to me? How are you going to help me? It's as if we retreat to a cave. Scripture says that Jesus went to the mountain to go pray when the disciples was told, go on the other side. Just because you go to the cave and you feel bad, it don't mean that you're not being strengthened. 
It don't mean that you're not being encouraged in the cave. I know it's not comfortable where I'm at right now. I know sometimes I wish I had more money. I wish I had my relationship the way it's supposed to be. I wish I wasn't, it didn't have so much trouble. But you got to understand, when I walk, I might just start walking on water the next time you see me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The scripture said that they were looking for Jesus and Jesus told them, go ahead. And they go on and they said, not only is he walking on water, he shows up walking in the middle of the storm. What kind of strength is that? It's hard enough to walk on ground in a storm. What in the world was he walking on? To be able to walk on the water in a storm. Oh, oh. So more than Jesus looking at the water, as if this, as if the water was looking at him. As if whatever needed to be most stable, it immediately assumed its position by the time his next foot stepped down. <laughs> He said that every place the sole of your feet, he was trying to be an example for us, hallelujah, Man. to show us who we called to be. And David said, I understand that my, my family can't handle all this right now. This is what David said. David said, can my family come stay with you? Verse number four. Verse number four. So David left his parents with the king of Moab. Do y'all see that? They stayed with the king for the rest of the time. And David said, I got to be Captain King, man, right now. I got to see, I got to continue to deal. Do y'all remember how many men was, was with David in the cave? Y'all remember? 400. 400. So, so y'all think that was a small cave? Nah, that thing was big. 400 men. There's other there's other texts talking about these men that said they all were warriors. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you something. Just because your relationship situation might not be straight, it doesn't mean that you still don't have the power what God gave you. Just because you might be broke right now, don't mean you don't have the wisdom that God gave you. Yeah. Everybody say, I'm just being taught right now. I'm just being taught right now. Because the things that control that it's not supposed to control you. Hallelujah. I said, come here, come sit down. Let me talk to you about something. Scripture said they stayed with the king the whole time that David was in the duel. And this is what most of us waiting on right here. Verse number five. Then Gad the prophet came to David and said, it's time to go. Let me tell you something. Sometimes it can become so hard in the midst of the stuff that we're going through that you begin to make your lifestyle being in a cave. Mm. You get to a point where you don't never want to confront nobody. Get to the point where you become so passive. Get to the point where you just get so used to not having no money. You get to the point where you just, you just feel that's just the normal way it's supposed to be. And all of a sudden God will send a man of God to you and say, it's time for you to get out of here. You gotta leave that mindset. Hallelujah. I know you guys used to be in there for a while, but that season is over. Everybody say that season is over. That season is over. It's over. Get up on your feet. It's time for you to arise. Come up out of this dry, damn, uncomfortable place. Jesus Christ. I gave you an authority. Hallelujah. He said, do not stay in this place. Go to the land of Judah. So David left the safe place and went to the forest at Horeb. Y'all, I need you to understand that even though the cave is a large chamber, typically natural in origin, like a mountain, a hillside, cliff, large enough for humans, most of the time it's a place of retreat, a place to run, get scared, and you run to the cave. Fear of being, having to confront somebody. Scripture said when Elijah said, seize every one of these prophets of bed. 
See, catch every one of them. And don't ever allow another word to come out of their mouth that's going to corrupt what we're doing in the kingdom. And all of a sudden, this woman Jezebel said, So it be even more so to me if I don't make your life like this by this time tomorrow. One woman. You mean to tell me you can kill 450 prophets and then one woman tell you something and you start running? Yo, we don't understand. All of us have a time in our life where you don't feel as strong as you know you are. Sometimes you need, I don't know about y'all, but sometimes I need somebody to remind me what God said about me. It's like, sometimes I need somebody to tell me and help me to get my mind right. Sometimes I need to make sure that I don't lose it because it's too easy to fall. The scripture says, David said, my foot had almost slipped when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. Ooh. But I had to be reminded, fret not thyself because of evil doers. Neither be envious against the workers of iniquity because they shall soon be cut off. Some of those people that's trying to bring harm to your mind and to your psyche, a lot of them will be no more. No more. Now I need to let you know what else is a cave. A cave is a place of consecration. Hallelujah. Where you go to be reminded of who you are. The cave is a place of pressing. Where you get the oil out of the olive. It's got to be crushed. <laughs> the cave is a place where dying takes place. Dying to your own will. Dying to your emotions because my knowing got to be stronger than my feelings. The name of Jesus. The cave is a place where your emotions and your feelings have to die. When those emotions and feelings think that they can stand toe to toe with the commandment from God. And all of a sudden we're thinking because we don't feel like it, maybe I shouldn't obey God. That's why the scripture says obedience is better than sacrifice. Hallelujah. The cave is a place where dying takes place. But just because dying takes place in the cave, it don't mean we're supposed to become casualties. There's parts of us that die, but it's not all of us that die. There's other things that's getting stronger. There's other things that's coming out of the cave realizing I might have to walk on water. There's other parts coming out of the cave that say I might have to go slay this giant. Hallelujah. So now I'm not focused on everything else. People making me worry about my house, make me worry about my car, make me worry about my relationship. You know what? go to the cave. The cave is like the time when you choose to go on a fast. And you choose to deny those things, those natural things that you always turn to. The cave is like you going into your bedroom and say, I'm not going to look at the game today. I'm not going to listen to certain type of music today. You know why? Because I need to be consecrated. Mm -hmm. David said these men had not had sex for three days. Three days. Most church people will say, ah, oh, that ain't enough. Just let them die. Let them die from starvation. David said, wait a minute. This is a new, this is a new breed of men that God is raising up. And sometimes the decisions that we make, some people in church may not understand what's going on. But the ones who call, David, you sure it's all right for us to eat this bread? Man, eat it. David said, I'm going to eat it with you. And whatever happened to us, so be it. Y'all, you got to understand, the priest that Saul found out that this priest gave the bread to David, all of them got killed. Yeah, yeah. Yo, just because you saw suffering, it don't mean that you're wrong. Sometimes you're suffering because you did the right thing. <laughs> and you chose not to regard your own life for the purpose of obeying God. All of them died. And one priest got away and David told him, he said, man, you'll be safe as long as you stay with us. Stick with us. 
The cave is also a place of release. That's why the prophet showed up to David and said, we spent enough time here. It's time to get up and go. It's time to get back on your business. The cave is also a place of refreshing. Because once you humble yourself so much, and you done got used to sleeping on a cave floor, if something happens we don't have a bed or a mattress, that's not a big deal to you anymore. Because you're like, man, that's carpet, man. That carpet sure looks comfortable compared to a cave floor that's damp and dry and hard. So now your sense of gratitude has shifted. Like, shit. Somebody talking about all I got is bologna in the refrigerator or all I got is peanut butter and jelly. But you let you tell that to somebody who's been homeless. Yeah. They gonna be like, man, that look like steak to me. That look like the best dish that I could ever have. Hallelujah. See, sometimes God will bring us to the cave so we can be reset. Hallelujah. Ay, 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 ay. It's like taking your computer. If your computer or your cell phone is tripping and it seems like you're not getting a good connection, sometimes you just need to restart it. Restart the phone so it can recalibrate. So it can send to its strongest settings. I'm not talking about a phone anymore. I'm talking about you as the Lord's vessel. Reset it and refresh it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ooh. You're still connected to something that was in a different season. You're still connected to something that's in a different location. What is God saying to me right here, right now? <laughs> Where I was, he was telling me to humble myself and not say something. Where I'm at right now, he's saying, pursue. Without fail, you will overtake and recover all that you lost. So I need to have a proceeding word from God. place of consecration, pressing, dying, death takes place, but but now I'm not, everybody say I'm not a casualty. I'm not a casualty. It's a place of release, refreshing. It's also a place of being relaunched. Sin out again. As if you ain't never fallen. As if you ain't never messed up. Got your mind right. And now I'm looking for that test to come so I can pass it this time. I'm not looking for the test like I'm shaking, ready to go back to the cave because I want it so bad. I want her so bad. I want that so bad. Now, nah, being relaunched is like, wait a minute, I know who I am now. Hallelujah. I ain't got to fall for something temporary. If I get it from God, it's going to come from the fire. And it's going to be able to endure whatever it is that we go through. Praise the Lord. And the last thing I'm going to say, y'all, in the play in the cave, is a place of humility. The cave will humble us. Minister G was teaching this morning. And he was saying, sometimes we got to be able to hear God. He said, I was willing to take a job that might have made 10 or 12 dollars an hour, but God had something better in mind. I got a job making 20. But I remember a time, y'all, with a whole college degree and everything, I had to take a job making seven dollars an hour because I was in a cave. My house was on the full clothes. I keep saying that, y'all. I'm not just telling y'all this for y'all. I'm telling y'all this for me because I need to keep my deliverance. I need to keep my freedom. Hallelujah. Oh, boy. My house was on the full clothes. Man, I had a nice call, man. I told you was selling a convertible. I lost it when I was in the cave. But God allowed me to keep my house. The cave will help you not to lose it. When it seems like what you wish you had, it's like you watch it leave your fingertips. 
You watch him leave your fingertips. You watch her leave your fingertips. And you remember that you got to keep your focus on the one who called you. Hallelujah. Because while all this stuff is taking place all around me, man, the back of sin, I look down at my feet. And my feet started looking like the feet of a deer. And he said, God told me these feet were prepared to walk on high places. No matter what's going on. Everybody said, I'm going to this higher place. I'm going to this higher place. Let me show you. Let me show you. Let me show you what the cave will do. When Saul was talking about trying to kill David, go to verse number thirteen, right here in First Samuel twenty-two. First Samuel twenty-two. I want y'all to show. I'm gonna show y'all what the cave will do to a person. First Samuel twenty-two. Verse number 13, Boston. Verse Samuel 22, verse 13 says, Saul said to him, Why have you conspired against me? You and the son of Jesse, giving him bread and a sword, and inquiring of God for him, so that he has re rebelled against me and lies in wait for me. As he does today. Listen, y'all. Did y'all hear what Saul just said? Wow. Saul said, he's talking to the priest. The priest knew what the king desired. But the priest also knew David. The priest also knew God. Are y'all hearing me? the son of Jesse seemed to be trying to kill me. He said, you gave bread to David. You gave a sword to David. You prayed to God on David's behalf. And David is not obeying me. Now he's waiting to attack me. All this response that the priest gives to Saul. Oh my God, Minister Mwamba, read that next verse, man. Hallelujah. So Amiak answered the king and said, And who among all your servants is as faithful as David? Oh my God. Oh. Hallelujah. Who is the king's son in law? Who goes at your bidding and is honorable in your house? Look, look, look what this easy English translation says. I'm pretty sure at this point the priest knew his life probably was in danger. But he stood flat footed and testified. Yeah. The priest said, Ahimelech said, David is the most loyal servant you ever had. I'm going to tell you something, sometimes when people treat you bad, it don't mean that you were doing something wrong. Sometimes they treat you bad because you're the best they ever had. And they don't even know what it feels like to have somebody like you. And the enemy attacks their mind and makes them treat you like you're the worst because you have the nerve to start elevating me. Everybody say, I will emerge. I will emerge. Ahimelech said, he's the most loyal servant you ever had. And what he said, have you forgot? David is married to your daughter. Like evidently, whatever David did, it couldn't have been so bad. You trusted him with your own daughter. Look what he said after that. David is the captain. Right. The whole reason why you still king right now 
The one who's trying to kill is still guarding the boundary of the kingdom. How many of y'all can do that? Have somebody you know they're trying to hurt you and you still fight to defend them. See, when you don't understand that, it's because you don't understand kingdom. Oh my God. He says he's the captain of the men that keep you safe. Keep you safe. Look what he says. Everybody in your family gives honor to David. Like in other words, you need to check yourself, Saul. You mean to tell me you the only one that got a problem with him? You mean all of your family, your daughter, everybody's looking at David. He's saying he's the most loyal servant you ever had. They never, this man showed up. He wasn't even a soldier. And he killed Goliath. And yet he still stood in the palace playing a harp for you. And you said that evil spirits left you at the, at the fingers of his hand on the instrument. Why are you going to kill him right now? Verse 15, I have prayed to God on David's behalf many times. Do y'all see that? The priest said, if I've always been praying for David, why am I going to stop now? I know the hand of the Lord was on this too. Just because you upset with him, King, I still choose, everybody say, I choose God. I choose God. It ain't about trying to choose sides. It's not about being biased because of how comfortable you are with a person. What is God saying? Yes, God. Himalayah mm-hmm. said in verse 15, I pray to God on David's behalf. What y'all about this? Verse 15, what y'all about this? Be it far from me. Let not the king impure any wrong. Let, it, let not the king impure anything unto his servant. Hallelujah. This was not the first time. King Saul, do not say that my family or I have done anything wrong. Y'all see that? The priest is saying, man, I know you're about to be upset with me. But it ain't because I did nothing wrong. We do not know anything about what is happening. I don't know. I don't know what got you tripping on that man so hard like that. I don't know. But just because I don't know what's happening, don't mean I'm about to change with David, and I'm definitely not about to change with God. What you gonna do? So guess what? Ahimelech found out, even though he didn't go to a duel. Ahimelech was in the cave also. And can you imagine what took place in the spirit? The scripture says they killed 85 priests that same day. 85 of them. And one of them got away and made it to David. And David said, your life won't be spared. Anyways. Some of y'all may be a captain, whether or not it's on a soccer team. Some of y'all may be a captain on your job, in your class. I I just need y'all to know today, don't run from being a captain in a cave. What does a cave mean? Hardship. Doesn't mean that you're not going to suffer. Doesn't mean that you might not feel like you're getting less than what you thought you deserved. But the bottom line is, I'm still a captain. Everybody say, I'm still a captain. I'm still a captain. I'm still a captain. Hallelujah. So, Father, right now, I just thank you right now, Lord God. I, I choose to honor you. Father, I believe that you're calling and you're causing other captains to emerge, Lord God. All of us know people who come to us when they're in trouble. All of us know people who are in debt, struggling. All of us know people. But this is not the time for us to become more like that and get absorbed into the things that's taking place in their lives. This is the time to emerge. 
is the time to elevate. So Father, I speak life right now, Lord God, over your people. And I pray right now, Lord Jesus, that no weapon formed against them shall be able to prosper. And every tongue that rises against them in judgment, I condemn every word. Everybody take a moment. Everybody just take a moment and condemn every word that's been spoken against you. Condemn it. I condemn every word that's been spoken against me. I cast down every word that was spoken against me. I bind every word and every thought. I bind every imagination that's being conjured up against me. Hallelujah. Because I still believe. Hallelujah. 